get your pens and papers out. I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to give you the whole thing. What I'm going to do, come back next week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some information. We're going to break it down. And I'm going to give you something to study. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I want to title this is, is the cor corruption of the priesthood. Because when you read in Daniel's the 8th chapter, when you read about the Persian, the Greeks, and so forth, and then it's going to read on down, we're going to go into Antiochus Epiphanes, which he tampered with the priesthood and corrupted the priesthood. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the title of the class, the corruption of the priesthood. And we're going to do maybe about 8 to 10 verses from 1 to 10 and give you some dates, you know, uh, of the battles of the Persians and the uh, Greeks. And then next week, and I teach the class again, and we're going to go step by step. But I want y'all to take these notes and take them home and study them, right? Okay. Uh, let's start from the first verse. Let me get a reader. Daniel chapter 8 verse 1. Come on. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me. Now when it said the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, now who was King Belshazzar? He was the son of Nebuchadnezzar. Who? Nebuchadnezzar. Who was King Belshazzar? Now when Daniel when this vision came of, about what kingdom was Daniel was Daniel in? Uh, right. So Belshazzar was the last king of the Babylonian Empire. He was the son of Nabonidus. Okay, which if you check the lineage on down, he, he would be uh, the son of Nebuchadnezzar on down. But he was the son of uh, Nabonidus. Okay? Keep reading. Even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. But I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw it in a vision. It's the province of what? Elam. Elam, which, which would be around uh, Iran, basically. Okay? Go ahead. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Uli. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw it, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up alive. So in this vision, Daniel said, Then I lifted up my eyes, and I saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high. It said, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. So this ram is a representation of the Persians, well, let's say the Medes and the Persians. Con? And when it said that uh, uh, one of the horns came up last, which is a representation of the Persians. Because when Cyrus the Persian took over, became king, I say in approximately about 559 B.C., he kind of rebelled against the Medes, okay, but they were still kind of, they were still in partnership, okay? Y'all writing this down? Mm-hmm. so fast. Run, run it back to me. What did I just say? I just wrote down, Ram is Medes, a representation of the Medes and the Persians. That's all I was able to write down. Am I going too fast? Mm -hmm. Y'all got to let me know now. <laughs> Or y'all go watch the show. <laughs> okay, the ram is the Persians and the Medes. And the Medes. And when it say that the the higher came up last, which the Medes was really over the Persian, but when it said the higher horn, I mean the higher came up last was when the Persians overtook the Medes, but they were still in partnership. When you read in the scriptures, the Medes were a uh, partnership with uh, the Babylonians too. They was partnership with many nations going against other nations. Okay? Now, read the fourth verse. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. 
but he did according to his will and became great. And no. as I was considering, behold, as he go, wait, no. And as I was considering, behold, and he go came from the. Okay, read, read that, read that fourth verse again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you something. I'm gonna give you some information. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will, and because. And became great. And became great. Now, <clears throat> there's a, a, a historian. I'm going to spell the name out. Y'all write it down. Ammonius Marcellinus. A-M. Write the name. A-M-M-I-A-N-U-S. A-M-M-I-A-N-U-S. Marcellinus, M-A-R-C-E-L-L-I-N-U-S. In his writings, y'all got the name? Mm -hmm. In his writings, he stated that the Persian rulers, because the scriptures, it's not just here describing a ram as the Persian just to be here because the Persians were more stronger than the Medes, they were more powerful than the Medes. So, uh, Mas Marcellinus said that the Persian ruler, he wore like an emblem of a ram on his head as a headdress when he stood in front of his army. The Persian, Persian ruler, Persian ruler okay. wore a ram, okay? And their emblem was a ram, he has it where they had, on the Persian coins, they had an emblem of rams. And also, the Persian emperors, their emblem, their headdress, was like an emblem or, or symbol of a ram. Okay, so when you read in the scriptures, the ram representation Persian. of the Persian, because they were, you know, they, they really were more powerful. So you, you add that, I mean, for their jacket, the Persian Medes, you say basically the Persians. Persian, right. Okay, because when you read about Cyrus the Persian, Cyrus the Great, the Most High had prophesied about Cyrus years ago, man. Okay, you know, before he even came on the scene. Okay. So the Persians was the higher horn. The higher horn. Well, the, the horn that came, the horn that was last, that came up higher. Okay, because when Cyrus the Persian became king, he rebelled against the Medes. Okay, so now from here, <clears throat> When it say that the ram was pushing in these different directions, north with the Scythians, then west with the Greeks, and south with, he was pushing against the Egyptians. Okay? Now, keep reading. You at the fifth verse, right? Yeah, and as I was considering, behold, an eagle came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Now, y'all never read this? About the he goat? No? No. Y'all never read about the, the notable horn that was between the goat's eyes? No. Y'all never read about who that notable who that notable uh, horn was? No. Okay, read it again. Let's break it down. <clears throat> and as I was considering, behold, and he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes between his eyes now the he goat now the goat is a representation is identified as Greece the Greeks okay and the goat it was okay the Greek Empire what they were called the goat people at one time you can read uh, um, what the scholar Adam Clark wrote, as many scholars wrote about this, they was uh, identified as the goat people at one time. Okay. And now, when it say touching the ground, is well, the noble horn is Alexander the Great. Now, when he came into power, when it said touching the ground, that he started conquering and running through nations with great speed. It's like he wasn't even touching the ground. He, he was operating so swiftly and so, so fast and so vicious. Okay, now the notable ruler was Alexander the Greek. 
Gone. Okay. Huh? What'd you say? The noble horn was who? Alexander. They, it's Alexander the Great. Alexander the Greek. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the goat were the Greeks. And that notable horn that was noticed amongst all was Alexander. Alexander. He was the great one. Okay. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> and he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. Now, we know that the ram is who? Persians. Persians and the Medes. Persians and the Medes, but mainly the, the, the power Persians. of them two Persians. were the Persians. Persians. And the goat, it said the goat ran into the ram. The goat is who? Alexander. So what I'm going to do is, is give you some of the wars of the Persians and the Greeks. A lot of historians said that those was vicious wars, bloody wars between the Greeks and the Persian, and, and there were there were vicious wars even before Alexander came on the scene. They was they had vicious wars. Okay. Those in the Josephus. Huh? Those wars in the Josephus. It's in the Josephus, yeah. And there's another uh, uh, historian. Y'all write this down. Uh, a Greek historian named name, uh, uh, Herodotus. Read some of his stuff. H H E R H E R O D O T U S. Guess I'm spelling it to you right. If not, I turn over my notes and get it for you. Mm -hmm. Greek historian. Huh. Okay. But we're gonna backtrack and get some of the wars that the Greeks and the uh, uh, Persians fought. They said they were vicious, bloody wars, man. Because when you read in Sri, read that again, brother. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury. In of the his fury power. of his power. So those was powerful battles. Uh -huh. Those was battles with hate, man. Fury, hate, treacherous, bloody, vicious battles. In our time, you think what World War One, Two, and all this stuff. You know they had. Uh, they had the technology mm -hmm. in our time, uh, the missiles, the tanks and so forth, uh, 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 the planes dropping bombs and so forth. But these guys had, they had a navy, swords and so forth, mm -hmm. yeah, bloody war. So a lot of times to get to the enemy, you had to step to them. You couldn't stand off and drop no bombs or anything, you, you, had, you had to go step to them. And, and go to war. That's right. You had to, it's just like uh, Judas Maccabees. Okay, they didn't have no bombs or whatever. You know, they had the slings. Mm -hmm. They had the uh, uh, what they call it, the uh, 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 a cattle pole. Catapult, catapult. Yeah, the catapult. Yeah, where you put the stone in and sling it. Sling it. Yeah. You had. Mm -hmm. See, that was their bomb. Mm -hmm. That was their missile. Mm -hmm. But to get to the enemy, they would go into the enemy's land climb the walls and so forth and take them out. Mm. Like when you read in the scripture where it say that the Persians destroyed the Babylonians, it speaks about one hour. That was the ancient Babylonians, but the modern Babylon, which is America, is going to be destroyed in one hour as well. But the ancient Babylonians was destroyed, say, in one hour. And Cyrus the Persian, when you read in the scripture, the Most High said he's going to give Cyrus, Cyrus the Persians the two leave gates. That was the Babylonian Empire. He was gonna come straight through the gates. Mm. And, and, and how they did it, it wasn't really no big war. Cause Cyrus the Persian, the river Euphrates ran through Babylon. And Cyrus the Persian army went in the Euphrates and swam under the gates and came up under the gates into Babylon and surprised them and took them. Mm. See, one out, took them out. Mm. Yeah, because the Most High see Cyrus was prophesied long ago. Mm -hmm. When you read in the scriptures, uh, uh, Isaiah prophesied about Cyrus the Persian. The Most High said, yeah, this is my anointed. He going to do this. He going to do that. Uh, he going to let my people go and they going to build my temple. Huh. Okay, that's why the Most High called him that. Not, huh. not that, hey, you're going to be sitting next to me. He wasn't mm -hmm. talking about that. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and he spoke, spoke about him being a shepherd. 
Not not that he he gonna go out and and push the Most High's word. No, he just used it at that time. Mm -hmm. See, but they were bloody vicious battles. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with shoulder against him. Anger, anger. <clears throat> and smote the ram, and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped on, upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. And there was none that can deliver the ram from out of his hand. Now let's let's go into some some of these uh some of these battles. You know the way this reads is you can see it was vicious. Yeah. Yeah. Going down to the ground, stamped Yeah, stamp him, <laughs> fury. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you when you even watch movies about the Greeks and the Persian Wars, they bloody. Mm -hmm. And when you watch movies about uh, the Maccabean War, mm -hmm. they was bloody. Yeah, that, that's when that's when men had to show themselves as men in that time. That's when you had to you had to go with the sword. Wasn't no running from no battle. Because at that time, men was fighting over uh, 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 territory, land, and they was fighting for their people. See, because the Maccabees, Israel, King David, and them brothers was fighting for the Most High, fighting for their people, their land. They was fighting for their God. So killing wasn't no thing. Because the nations we was fighting against was wicked anyway. So when we became wicked, then the Most High reversed it and had nations to take us out. See, that's that's why we got to stay on the track, right track, and obey, and obey. Okay, let's go into some of the wars. Uh, may not be in particular order, but there was one war: the Persians and the Greeks. This was around approximately 490 B.C. Write this down: 49 B.C. This was the battle, and mo look, most of these wars was, was around Greece. This is the Battle of Marathon. The 490, right? 490. 490. The Battle of Marathon. Now, <clears throat> there was this guy, write his name down. I'm going to try to pronounce it right. Uh, Pheidippides. P-H, what I'm giving y'all look it up now, and next week we're going to come back, and, and I'm going to see what you found, what you got out of it. P-H-I-D, I-P-P-I-D-E-S. I would say Phidippides, or Phidippides. When the Greeks won that battle, this guy ran around. We won! And he started running, proclaiming victory, right? He ran from Marathon all the way to, to Athens. That's about 25 miles. He running, we won, blah, 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 to proclaim the victory. And this was the battle of what? Marathon. marathon. And that's how you got your, your, your marathon e event today from this battle. <laughs> Because he running around, we won, you know, proclaiming victory, ran 25 miles. Wow. We won, uh, proclaiming the victory, and that's, that's how they got the marathon, the, the runners and everything okay. today. We ran 25 miles. <laughs> wow. Okay, write that down. And don't forget his name, look his name up, and check it out. And you had another battle. The battle of... Thermopylae. The Battle of Thermopylae. T H E R M O P Y L A E. Thermopylae. T H E R M O P Y L A E. A E. The Battle of Thermopylae. And in history, it said that the Persians torch and they overran most of Greece at that time and let's put this around 
I'll say about around 480 BC. And when the Greeks was battling, they had an alliance with some of the Greek, Greek states, the people that was in, in, in like the colonies, the Greek states of Greece. And you had one king that was part of that Greek alliance his name was, was Leonidas. Y'all heard of him, right? Yeah. Yeah. In that movie, 300. Yeah. So the Battle of Thermopylae, when you watch that movie, see, Leonidas was of Sparta. And he had 300 fighting men that was with him. That's where that movie came from, 300. And, and when you watch that movie, you heard two well-known names. Leonidas. And who was the Persian ruler that he was fighting against? Who? Xerxes. Xerxes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Xerxes. Yeah, so those were real real people. And, and that movie 300, that's what it was uh, a little bit based on, the Battle of uh, Thermopylae. That was one of their battles. Okay? And, and Leonidas was like a, a, a allied, you know, one of the allied states of the Greeks mm -hmm. fighting against the yeah, Persians. Yeah, because yeah, remember when he took the sword and threw it at Xerxes, and I think the sword kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. hit his hit his ear a little bit. Right, right, yeah, right. yeah. So those were real people. Mm -hmm. You know, when you read uh, the history, mm -hmm. they're actually real people. They're, they're not made up. Okay. Sometimes when movies recreate them, sometimes the dates be off or they have the names in the wrong place. Like, uh, uh, what's the movie? Uh, Russell Crowe played in. They had oh, um, right, 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 right. They they had the names kind of mixed up a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. But they, I mean, they had the right names, but they was kind of in the wrong place. Huh. Okay. And they were the wrong nation too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Now one of the battles, the Greeks and Persians, was the Battle of Machael, M Y C A L E. M Y C A L E, and that was around 479 B.C. Y'all got that? Then it's another battle, the Battle of Plateau. P L A T A E A. They was having battle after battle after battle. Mm. And then the battle of Salamis. S-A-L-A-M-I-S. Write that down. What is it again? Salamis. Salamis. S-A. Like I said, it may, it may not be in, 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 in order. Uh, around what time for the battle of Plateau? I would say around in, in 479 B.C. too. Okay. Yeah. And the Battle of Salamis, it was a naval battle. So why did... It was a naval battle. It was a naval battle. Battle of Salamis, S-A-L-A-M-I-S. Did the Americans take it take America back over. Now we're back under the American influence. Now the Brits come, now we're under the British influence. Mm -hmm. so, so each one of the, uh, the Seleucids or the Patolos that took over Israel, we was under their influence. Greek customs. Okay, but the Patolos had a little of this, the Greek had a little of that. The different kings, the Seleucid dynasty, and, and then the dynasty of the Patolos. So our minds was all messed up, man. Just imagine that. And, and, and we was in the midst of battles and wars. And our children growing up in battles and wars and seeing <laughs> bloodshed every day. Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't like these children today. Mm -hmm. You know, they take a lot of stuff for a game. Back then, it was, it, it was you live or you die. Okay? Yeah. It was real back then. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because a lot of them were seeing their parents being put to death. Mm -hmm. Over the Greeks was pushing their customs and their belief system on our people. See, America done already did that. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. See, our, our forefathers and mothers went through that. Mm -hmm. Slavery and so forth. Uh -huh. So so now we like all oh, some of us think that ain't got nothing to do with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we acting out what happened to them. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. You ever you ever get a chance to read uh the Willie Lynch legacy, the, the Willie Lynch papers. Mm -hmm. Even Israelites still got that Willie Lynch sin syndrome mm -hmm. in them uh -huh. and they holding the book and out there teaching every day. <clears throat> because the Willie Lynch syndrome teaches you to go at one another, mm -hmm. to be against one another, right, right. to have hatred for one another. Uh -huh. Now, when you come into this word, uh, Yahweh said, the world would know that you're my disciples if you have love and respect one another. Right. But uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of us in these camps and in these schools don't have that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, you see a camp out there doing uh -huh. well, brother, teach against that. Mm -hmm. right. See, that's that Willie Lynch legacy, man. Right. See, we, we never got away from that. Mm -hmm. If you in this truth 50 years, it's still in you. Mm -hmm. You could be in this truth 60 years. Mm -hmm. That slave mentality, that Willie Lynch spirit is still in you. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's going to take a higher power, mm -hmm. a, a divine intervention mm -hmm. to change us, to, to, to break that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because cause it's embedded in us. I don't care how many scriptures you read. If you ain't living them, you ain't getting rid of that spirit. Yeah, you have to go through that cleansing. You have to live it. You, have, you, have, you even have to fast. See, we, we don't know how powerful fasting is. You know, we, are, we just only do it on the Day of Atonement because you have to. Okay? You don't do your own fast. I mean, if some of us have to, and we don't even know if you're doing that or not. Come. You come in, we breaking it fast, you know, for the day of atonement. You come in fat as anything, like you've been eating all week. <laughs> Face all glowing and mm, mm, yeah, I guess. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but yeah. that's between you and the most high. Yeah. Somebody had their hand up. Yeah, I did. I was just saying uh, that when Paul was talking about um you know, some say I'm a Paul, I'm a Paul, right. some say I'm a uh, Apollos. Yeah, right. He said right. we're not cardinal. Right. So you're saying yeah. what that? We're not gonna be able to change that to if, the most I to interject. The, the way the way it's going now. I mean, it yeah, can I see the way it's going. It now. can be changed if a person want, want to change. change. Mm -hmm. okay. See, see, but sometimes power, what we think that's power, mm -hmm. keep us from change. See, because some sometimes I mean, even if you in the streets. I mean, you doing this, you, you got a crew behind you, mm -hmm. and, and, and you might want to do right to stop a war. Well, well we ain't going to get into beef with these cats. You know, but you got some of your boys in the back, you know, behind your ear. Yo, yo, man, this, you know, and that's puffing you up, and, and you make that move. Mm -hmm. You don't want no peace. Mm -hmm. You don't want to end no beef. Mm -hmm. You don't want to deal with situations that's, that, that's going to save lives. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be right for the hood. Because if you got a war, then you, you ain't going to make no money. Mm. Police going to be over there all the time. Mm. <laughs> and I'm not pushing nothing negative, y'all. No, no, I'm no, just no, saying. Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? No, I'm just so, saying I think it's right. strange that, you know, all these camps out there, yeah. we overlook that scripture. We have a hard time with that one. Well, well we, we, over, we overlook a lot of them. That's, that's, that's right what we're supposed to be doing for us, for us brotherhood. Mm. Yeah, we look over a lot of brotherhood scripture. Now, we'll teach it. To, to your congregation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you won't add it out to the other congregations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brother, I, I love you. I, I, I've been in congregations, brother said, turn around and tell the brother that you love him. Say y'all yeah, say love one another. Mm -hmm. But then you'll walk by, brother, out there teaching in camp with garments on and fringes just like you, and walk right by him. Mm -hmm. And I, I never knew you. Get behind me, say. Mm -hmm. See, see, but that brotherhood teachings, that, that love and respect teachings, is just for your camp. It's not for the nation. See, because you won't implement that for the nation. You you will implement that and push that for your camp. Yeah, come on. And, and that was something that came to me. I was saying to my wife, it's, it's like a click. It comes back to camp. So it's about to come like a click. Like and like, oh, this is my this is my click. That's my click. Yeah. That's my click. Okay. You know that that's when you get numbers uh, behind you. Right. When you get numbers and you think. You got power. You on a power move. Mm. It kind of does something to you. I, yeah, See, yeah, if, if, if you're not 
going into these scriptures and then yeah. living these scriptures, it kind of does something to you. Mm -hmm. Even even if you don't have numbers, I mean, you, you can have about 10, 15 people. You get a little something, a little stripe here, then your head kind of goes somewhere else and, you know, in another direction. You start doing and operating in a way that it, that it wasn't then supposed to be from the beginning. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the program. Done. Yeah. Okay, let's jump back in the scriptures. Uh, well, I was going into the battles of Alexander the Greek and the Persian. There was one battle, like I said, it may not be in order. Matter of fact, this, this is kind of in order. The one, one of the battles was the Battle of the Granicus River. Y'all write this down. This is the Alexander the Greek and the Persians. The Battle of the Granicus River. And the Granicus River was located uh, in uh, western Turkey. This was in approximately uh, 334 BC. The Granicus River. And they were bloody wars. Bloody wars. Do I have to spell anything? Y'all got it? Granicus. G-R-A-N-I-C-U-S. Granicus River. Uh, 334 BC. Yeah. And the next battle was the Battle of Issus. I S S U S. Uh, Isis or Issus. That was in three, 333 BC. And that was located in southern Turkey, close to Syria. And the Persian ruler was Darius III. Y'all writing this down? We're going to go back over it now. So there's no coincidence. I, 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 I see some of your eyes going here. You're taking a little rest here and there, but we're going to go back over it. Yeah. Uh, for who the, uh, well, that was Alexander and Darius the third, the Persian. It's just, I S S U S. For for who? Isis. Well, this was just the area. It was Darius the third, the Persian, and Alexander the Greek. For the Greeks. Oh, this is just. This was the name of the battle. It, it wasn't. It wasn't a. Yeah. And y'all ready? Y'all right, sister? Okay. You know, we're not too far down the street, are we? We okay? All right. The next battle is. <laughs> I don't want to go too fast. The next battle is the Battle of Gargamela. G A U G A M E L A. Around 331 BC. This located in northern Iraq. You see, you had you had many battles in those areas. Turkey, Iraq, Iran. Okay? Israel. And the most I say he's gonna gather all nations in the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's that's gonna be a bloody battle too. So so that you you know we, we should we should look at what what kind of mentality do the most I have, man? Yeah, G A U G A U G A M E L A. The most I told you, the man of war. Man of war. That's right. Right. Some of us forget that. But the Most High is all righteous, brother. Right? Because what? We became wicked. And we went into slavery. Our nation failed. The nations were wicked. Even the nations that was uh, occupying Israel. You can remember when, when the Assyrians took the northern tribe, took them captive. And they brought some of the priests back. And, and put them in the land to, you know, they bought the little, little low, low priest back. Right, right. And, and, no, no, they took them. They, they, um, they was uh, taking Samaritans, them, wasn't it? Samaritans. Yeah, Samaritans. And they made them priests. 
Right. So what the Assyrians, the name of their game was, one of their tactics that they used was called, uh, 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 I don't want to use dispatching or, I, I want to use, they would take nations, I would say to cause confusion within nations, they would conquer nations and take them, I, I would call, they use a technique called scattering. That's what I'm looking for. It's a technique that the Assyrian used called scattering. So they would take, just say they would take the Israelites, take them captive, and then put the Samaritan, uh, Samaritans in their land. Mm. Or they would take uh, Cush and put Israel in the land of Cush. Mm. And then take the Cush <laughs> and then put them somewhere else. Mm. It, it was a tactic that they used called scattering. Mm. They deport to cause confusion in the minds of the nation that they conquered. Mm. Took them in and scattered them into different lands. See? So that's where they got it from. From, from who? From them. America got it from. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 America is, is reading everybody's history, man. They in everybody's history. I mean, history. when they come with that divide and yeah, conquer. Divide and conquer. Yeah, divide yeah. and conquer. Yeah. I mean, it, they, they, even, they even did that to us. Divide and conquer. Well, that's, actually, that's the way it is. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I mean when, when, when you... When you on the wrong side with the Most High, when, when you're wicked, mm. and when you go against the Most High, that's what happened, man. Mm. You, you see the other side mm. of the Most High. You, you don't want to see that, that other mm. side. Because you remember you growing up, you know, when I was growing up uh, under my father, I always like to see that smile inside. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't want to. You didn't want to see that. Oh, oh, okay, mom. Make you know. Make sure his dinner's on the table. <laughs> make, make sure you know if it's not Sunday. You know we eat, we eat as a family. Okay. Make sure he and there by himself eating on the mother days. <laughs> we don't want it because he coming in late. <laughs> you know we want to see that smile. We don't. We don't want to see that their eyebrows are like that up and down. That anger. You don't want to see that. So you don't want to see that that other side, you know, like you don't want to see the other side of your dad, even your big brothers, mm -hmm. or your big sisters. And I used to catch it from all of them, big brother, big sister, all that, man. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to see that that other side of them. You doing right? You always, huh? There you go. You know, get your little candy. Okay, yeah. You know the smiles, but you you slip, you mess up. You see that other side, and that's with the most side. You don't want to see that terrible side of the most side. That's the other side that keep you in check. It keeps you in check. It's a balance, right? Yeah. You know that. No, that's that negative and that positive. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we we had to go through that to really learn that. You know, we just getting the good things at all times, man. What about this other side? We gonna be nosy anyway. I want to know what that feel like. Yeah, we know now, don't we? Yeah, got it. <laughs> I, I want to know what a whip feel. Okay, you know now. <laughs> what a mother nation going to slay me. I want to know how it feel. You know now. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go back through that. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. Now, there was that last battle. Let me... Okay, what, what verse we left off? We left off at 6, right? We were on the seven. Seven, seven. Okay, read 7 again. And as Zod come close unto the ram, and he was moved with troller against him, and smote the ram, and break his two horns. Mm -hmm. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down. You know, that's saying that the Greeks conquered the Persians. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped on him. Upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ramp out of his hand. Yeah, because it was all set up by the Most High. When the Most High set something up, when He set up your fall, oh. there, there, fall. there's not a prayer you can pray mm -hmm. to deliver you, and and that's bad. Mm -hmm. That's scary there. Mm -hmm. When when it, when it's time, when the Most High had already set you up for the fall, there's not there's not a fast or anything. Now, now there was sometimes brothers fast and prayed, and the Most High stopped certain things. But he have, he have his, he choose who he want to choose. 
I mean, e even Satan will turn his back. I ain't got no pause of that. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, Satan used people every day. But he also gave us time, though, right? He gave us yeah. he's patient. That's what it says. He's patient. You, you know why, right? Right. Because when, it's, when your time comes to fall after his patience. I'm saying, you know why it's patience. Your house shot. Yeah. The blood, see, see, now the most I had something there, the, the sacrifice, mm -hmm. and, and he got tired of us being slick with the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. See, see, we was still trying to be slick with him, God. even in the, the animal sacrifice. God. Word. See, so that's at times when the most I said, No, it's his time to get up out of here now. Mm -hmm. So, the most I got sick and tired of the animals, then he said, Okay, I got this body right here, and the scriptures say. Yahweh only sacrificed one time. He's, he's not going to come back no, from Adam. He's no. not going to come back from uh, uh, the medieval time. He's not going to come back from the modern day time to be sacrificed three or four times. Only one time. So, so now it's our job to do the right thing, to get on the right track. Yeah, that's why the Days of Atonement mm -hmm. comes into play. The Most High, He honors that. Okay, that, that don't mean that you 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 keep doing what you you know doing every year, mm -hmm. the madness every year. Uh, no, each day of atonement, you take it to the next level. You grow. Yeah, you uh, grow. You don't go backwards. You move uh, forward. Okay, let's read, brother. You all right? You good? Let's go. Therefore, therefore the oh wait, therefore the he got. The he, the he who? The he goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and four came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. Now, and I know y'all read this because the classes was taught. This this same chapter, <coughs> I've taught this class maybe about three or four times. Mm. But but I see it, it, it was a different crew each time. Yeah. <laughs> So, give me a breakdown. Try to break down. Um, try to break down this ninth. What's that? This eighth verse. Someone try to break that down. Give me a hand. Try to break down Nazi And out of the one, so I'm assuming uh, I'm saying the Greek had sons, and basically four other horns came up out of four other kingdoms. Okay. Came up out of the one great kingdom. Can can you can you try and name any of them or? Did you say Alexander the Great had uh, sons? No, well, he didn't have to. Yeah, he he had a son. Yeah, and he had a a, a brother. I believe his brother's name was uh, Aridias, but he wasn't that stable to rule on the throne. And he had a son, I think by, um, you know, some of the captains, the elders back there can help me out with it. I think by Roxanne. Oh, yeah, Roxanne. Okay, you know about that history? My man. <laughs> okay, I, I believe he had a son by her. But what it was, these four, hmm, these four notable ones, these guys was Alexander Generals. These was top. These, these guys wasn't no joke. So his brother wasn't strong enough to rule and the son wasn't strong enough to sit on that throne. They had to be like Alexander. They had to be a vicious, they had to be a terrible dude. But these generals, they'd been in battle. They done spilt blood. They done took conscience. They done did just about everything. They wasn't afraid of death. They weren't afraid to take lives. So they're looking to sit on these thrones now. Yeah, okay, you dead now. Your brother ain't sitting here. Your son is not going to sit here. Mm. But, but there, there were some of the generals that Alexander was a little close with tried to push his son as the next ruler. But then the vicious generals wasn't, wasn't standing for that. Now, these four generals or these four horns uh, 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 that rule from the four winds, mm -hmm. They were Alexander's top generals. Now, after he died, they was fighting, fighting over territory and the position. You read that history? Mm. What's your name again? 
Uh, you read about that? You know about Roxanne? You read that in school? Okay. Matter of fact, they're going to they gonna get to the they gonna get to the generals in your class. Or oh, two weeks ago? Okay, they're going to get to the generals. Yeah, the brother knew about Alexander's re of Roxanne. He knew about that. That's good. Yeah. So if you in the classes, you know, you know study, study the history. You know, because some of that Greek history has something to do with us as a nation. Because we was calling ourselves Greeks. We took up the Greek customs and all that. Sometimes when you're reading about the Greeks, you're reading about the Israelites. You know, like what Ben was teaching earlier, the original Greeks were, were Japhetic. They was black. Okay? And then you got the Edomite Greeks, the whites. Then you got Israelites that was calling themselves Greeks. See? So, so that history is, is, is good. You know, when I was in school, man, I wasn't, you know, trying to get into none of that. But you know, coming to the truth, I got to go back and study that now. You know, because when you study the history, it, it, it's like when you in a quiet place, man, you sitting down studying this history, these battles, you actually putting your spirit in, especially Israel battles. Mm -hmm. You know, when they fighting over the temple, they fighting to keep the sacrifices going and all that, the priests and so forth, you actually, you actually, actually can feel yourself in these battles. Mm -hmm. You actually reading and, and, and you kind of feel something from that. Don't y'all feel something from that? Yeah, it actually make you feel like you're actually there. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. When you get like that and get that feeling, man, that, just keep reading, keep reading, keep keep reading until you get tired. Keep studying, keep taking notes. Because when we first came, when I first came in the truth, the elders they taught read the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. You remember that? I think my used to, used to say that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Read it from Genesis to Revelation. Read it again, and then go back. Study it. Take your notes. Study it. Words you don't understand. See, back then they didn't they didn't have your you know the phone, you looking in your phone. They didn't have the internet back then. You had to go into the books. That's why half of us can't see today. <laughs> you got you had to go into them books, man. You know, or you had to get on that phone and and hey, brother, and, 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 and then if you didn't have a phone, when that beeper went off, you had to go down and use a pay phone. You out there call, what's that scripture on there? You know? <laughs> yeah, because y'all y'all young brothers and sisters are blessed, man. Y'all got this technology. We didn't have that. We had to go buy books. We had to go get books, sit down, and read the books on our lunch break and, and, and all this stuff, man. And any time that we had to study and read, that's what we did, even on the train. Some of us didn't have time, you know, we sitting in the classes and some of us, the only time we had was when we riding the train. Mm -hmm. Reading, study, reading, reading. Mm -hmm. Then you're reading, I guess you're reading and the spirit is so heavy on you, when you look up, you see, you just feel that's the whole train is just looking at you. <laughs> you're like, well, what did I do? <laughs> you get back into the scriptures, continue to read, man. So so they see that, that aura on you. Yeah, they feel that vibe, they feel that energy. Because uh, you deep, I mean, your mind is locked into these scriptures. His yeah. presence right along with us at the time. That's yeah. the main thing. The what? So the Yahweh's presence. That's right. Yeah, right. Okay, now, it said his ninth verse. It said, and, and out of, no, the eighth verse. Therefore the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. So, so that, when that was Alexander, right? When he died, when his he four died, generals came right. up. His four generals. I mean, he had more than four, but these right, right. these were four top. main top yeah. generals that came up. With him. And right mm -hmm. after he died, they was disputing over the land. They had they had wars. It took them, it took them, like when you read the script, it said that they came up like they just came right up. But it took them 20 years to, to stabilize who gonna take what because it was so much killing, so much bloodshed. They said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Okay, you, you go ahead and take over there. I got over here. Are we cool with that? 
-hmm. and one of the classes that you was in, they was called his four generals and their wars. It was called what? What was the name of them? Um, you was in the class Dynasty too. Solutions. It, it was a name that it, it the uh, the meaning of that name is successors. Chris uh, got horses. No, this. Hold on. The name, you, she, she almost had it. She was sitting there, and then when I said success, she said, Whoa, not me. <laughs> no, you was in the class, the last class I taught, you was here, Sister was here, Sharon was in here, and uh, Isaac was here, and, and I think all of y'all was in here. It was called The Wars of the Successors, but it's a name, it's The Wars of the. The wars, you know what I'm talking about? Who is that? I can hear you, I can't see you. It's, it's called the wars of the Diadochis. You remember that, right? You remember that, sis? Check your notes. You got your notes? Check your notes. Do you see it? It's in your notes. Look, I, I taught this one last month. Yeah, yeah. What, what y'all... Y'all take the notes in my class and what, leave it at home now? <laughs> it was just last month. Oh, oh. You got it? Yeah. You got the wars of the Diadochus, right? Yeah. See? See, you write, you, you take your notes. Yes, she got it. You take your notes, it's going to be there. It's going to be there. Spell, spell Diadochus for them. Um, so, I, so I know you got it written down. <laughs> D-I-O-D-O-C-H-I. Yeah, D. I think I, I think I gave you the wrong spelling. <laughs> no, it's it's D I D. D I A D O C. You was in the class too, wasn't you? No, I wasn't there, but I know this. Okay, you know about that. Yeah. Okay. D I. It's a D. D I A D O C H I. Diadochis. Right, which means successors. Successors. If you if you if you look it up, look up the wars. Yeah. Of the Diadochis. between 322 and 327. Okay. She giving y'all the date now. No, 322 it, it, and 275. Okay. So it, it took them that long to, to stabilize who gonna take what. Now, now let's go into who took what. Let's go into the uh, uh, the four the four notable ones. See, that's why I say notable ones because these were the main cats. He had. Other generals, uh, there was one named, named uh, Cletus that he killed, got drunk and killed him. <laughs> you know, cause it, it was more, he had some that was tight with him. He killed one, you know, because at that time, Alexander was kind of getting paranoid and all this stuff, man. So he started killing up his homeboys, mm -hmm. you know. So, right. I, I mean, that, that happens in our time in, right. in right. drug gangs and all that, man. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's making more money than me. I don't know. He's trying to take take this over. Okay, and have him taken out. Okay, so one of the first notable ones was Lassamakas. Lawada, you've been in these classes. Or, or, or Bart, you, you've been uh, or Zakar. Zakar really, really knows. Zakar. That's a Lots of makers, L-Y-S-I-M-A-C-H-U-S. Lots of makers? Yeah. L-Y-S-I-M-A-C-H-U-S. He controlled Asia Minor. First Maccabees, the first chapter. First verse? First verse. The first, the first book of the Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chetim. Chetim. I think Ben read this earlier. Go ahead, Kitten. Smitten, Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes, that he reigned. In his st steed, right. 
the first over Greece. Come on. And made many wars and won many strongholds. Mm -hmm. And slew the kings of the earth. Come on. And went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations in so much. In so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became trib tributary tributaries mm -hmm. to him. And after these things he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore he called his servants such as were on a honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth, youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive come on so alexander reigned 12 years and then died and his servants bear rule everyone in his place right and after his death they all put crowns upon themselves so did their sons after them many years and evils were multiplied in the earth. Evils was multiplied in the earth. So these four generals put crowns up on their heads and they ruled and their sons ruled after them. Mm -hmm. That's where you get now my next class that I want to do uh may not be next week. I want to go back to this mm -hmm. next week to, to really go more into it. But I want to go into Daniel the eleventh chapter. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever read that? Y'all ever tried to study that? No? Yes. Y'all what's up? You never tried to study Daniel 11 chapter? Hmm? You may have read it, but you study it. Okay. Now Daniel's 11 chapter goes into the kings of the north and the kings of the south. Okay, because the kings of the north was like Israel. Like the Syria was kind of north from Israel, you just came from there, and, and Egypt was south. So the rulers in the north were the Seleucids, mm -hmm. and the rulers in the south were the Ptolemies. So they were just banging, banging Israel, banging Israel. When you read that Daniel 11 chapter, when it reads the kings of the north and the kings of the south, it have a lot of different time periods in that. Not just one king of the north, not just one king of the south. Is many different time periods in that that Daniel 11 chapter, uh, chapter. A lot of history, a lot of history is in that. And when you read about the Cleopatras, they were Edomites. They were Greeks. You had the Cleopatras were from the Seleucid line, and you had. Cleopatra's was from the Ptolemies. Yeah. Because he took over. Right. Right. See, so her ancestry, I mean, you know, the main Cleopatra that they that they pushing out there were, were Edomite. Now, way back and so forth, I don't know, but the main Cleopatra that, that they pushing throughout, uh, 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 she was Egyptian and all that, she was Edomite. Okay. Now the one that went for Solomon, he was, he was uh, the Queen of Sheba. Oh, she she she, she was dark skin. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now let's jump. Let's go from here. Read the ninth verse. Maccabees. Uh, let's go back into the Bible. Where am I read at? He the left. Brother gave up his post. <laughs> he then ran and gave up his post. I need you now, brother. He got the sword, the armor bearer. What, what the, the armor bearer went to the bathroom. And we on the battlefield, brother. He's supposed to have my back. <laughs> when the armor bearer got to go to the bathroom, brother, the battlefield is in jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay. Uh, the ninth verse, right? Yeah. Daniel 8, the ninth verse. And out of them came forth a little horn, right. which was exceedingly great towards the south and towards the east and towards the, um, the pleasant land. Right. And it was great 
even to the host of heaven. Now, when it when it say the the the, the pleasant land, what is it talking about? Israel. Israel. Now this. It said one of them came, said out of one came forth a little horn. Who was that little horn? Y'all heard his name many times. <coughs> he was he was the the antichrist of the Old Testament. But there's an antichrist is coming in the future. Okay, in this time. But he was the antichrist. He was the forerunner. Because he persecuted. Israel during the during the Maccabee time. Who was he? He was a king of the north. Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes. Which one? Was it King Josiah? No, no. She she had. Why did you desert me, brother? You let me get stabbed in the back, man. <laughs> It's King Antiochus the Fourth. Son of Antiochus the King. It's, 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 yeah, the fourth. He was called Epiphanes. Mm -hmm. But the Israelites called him Epimenes, mm -hmm. which means mad man. Mm -hmm. And he was a mad man. Okay, he was the Antichrist of the Old Testament. And you got the Antichrist. He's the, he was the forerunner of the Antichrist in this time, in the future, okay? And he came out of the Seleucid dynasty, Antiochus. And you had the Seleucids, Ptolemies, their dynasties was fighting over the land of Israel until it was taken by Antiochus III in 198 BC. Y'all look that up. Okay. Now what was one of the biggest doing Antiochus the fourth rule what was one of the biggest mistakes? Well, I won't say a mistake. What one of the biggest things that he did? Now, now he desecrated the temple, but he also interfered with what? You got it. He was almost there. He interfered with the priesthood. When you do that, man, Interfered with the priesthood. The priesthood became corrupt. It became wicked. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to read some of the chapters in the Apocrypha before we close mm -hmm. about a righteous priest by the name of Onanias. Onanias' brother had him put to death. His brother bribed Antiochus Epiphanes because mm -hmm. Onanias was a righteous priest. He was speaking against all the wicked wickedness that was going on. And the priesthood. In the priesthood and in Israel that Antiochus Epiphanes had instituted. Okay. And his brother Jason, and there was another one named Minilos. Minilos bribed Antiochus, he even gave him a bigger bribe. See, that's what they was doing back then with the priesthood. Mm. Selling out, bribing, it's just like brothers say today, such and such sold out, this is sold out. Well, they was doing that on a bigger level back then. Mm. See? And they was paying for the positions. They do that now. Yeah. They do that now. The politicians pay for positions. Yeah, votes and all this stuff. Yeah. But Israel was in the midst of that. The priesthood. They were the mediators for the people connection to the Most High. But they was wicked. Now, Onanaz the priest was the righteous priest and they had him put to death. <coughs> I'm going to read, we're going to read in the Maccabees that third chapter before we close, mm -hmm. okay? <clears throat> but <clears throat> let me give you a little something about Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes ordered his generals to seize Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Yes. Remember reading the Apocrypha? Some of the brothers said because of the Sabbath, 
we ain't gonna fight. And then they end up being put to death. And then the other brothers say, yo, man, I don't think we gonna do that, dude. I, I think the most I would want us to fight and live than to say that's the Sabbath and then we end up dead. Right. See, you can't praise the most I in the grave. Mm -hmm. So those brothers took up on the Sabbath, they took up arms, arms right. and they fought and they live. But if you look at the nations that attacked us, most of the time it was on the Sabbath. Mm. Or on one of the feast days, the great Rest feast them. days. Yeah. Right. So they they knew they knew the weakness. They knew that. And they know us now. See they study us. You don't you don't just think the Chinese coming in your neighborhood, just coming in there setting up little restaurants, you know, cut a little hole out, get in there and, and have about two tables. They really don't want you to sit in there and eat. You know, we got two tables, uh, put fire right, two chicken wings, and, you know, because <laughs> yeah. they know about you, man. They 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 they've studied you. Mm. There was a time that Chinese was selling shirts and jeans yeah. with, you know, look black faces on it and stuff like that, and and, and you know, uh, 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 black slain and, and logos and all that. They don't wear that, so they selling it. So for them to learn about us, they watching us. And when they get here, the people that already schooled them about us, the nation of Israel, see them niggas, now don't sleep on them, but treat them as niggas. You go as far as they'll let you go. You make sure you put that restaurant, find the largest projects in the neighborhood you can find, cut that little hole out, put your restaurant there, next to that liquor store, next to the Arab store, and that church right down on the corner. Uh, and that's what you got. <laughs> yeah, come on, brother. That's what I'm saying. I'll pertain to that. And that's why, you know, Yahweh's word said, you're going to punish all the nations, how the devil is on this earth. Yeah. But God said, 41st chapter, if you don't yeah. try, yeah. Yeah. So, so good. You just got to yeah. go up, Father. He's going to punish them. Yeah, He's yeah. He's going to punish them. He going to punish them. You know, we just obey. But, uh, uh, but look at this, too. <laughs> see, see what, what Israel, what, what I like to see Israel learn and for Israel to know. Yeah, the nations is going to be punished. But when you read the scriptures, we have to get ourselves together. When the Most High said, when his vengeance comes, he says, coming where first? Us. The house first. It's coming to the house first. So the Most High is telling you something now. That, that means we have to get ourselves. Yeah, we can, we can point here and point there. They're going to get it. It's, it's no doubt. But it's going to be a lot of Israelites falling to the side as well. They have to be taken out. Mm -hmm. the, the Israelites that's, that's not going to do, that's holding the rest of the nation back, mm -hmm. they have to be taken out mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. for the rest of the the uh, 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 the remnant that the Most High have left mm -hmm. for the rest of the remnant the to make rise. moves. Mm -hmm. Righteous moves. Yeah. You remember when uh, Judas Maccabees, when his father, uh, Mattathias, when they went into the mountains and so forth, mm -hmm. yeah. and 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 I and I think they were sacred. One of them was beginning to sacrifice, and Matthias pulled out, took him out right there, mm -hmm. yeah. and the rest of them started speaking against that and went to the Greeks and so forth. So now Matthias, they had to go to war because their own brothers wasn't with that. Right, right, right. He, he, he was in the mentality of the Greeks and, and we have brothers and sisters that's in the mentality yeah, of this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's certain things like scripture say we're going to be taken out, we're going here and there. Certain things that you're going to have to do in front of them and if they ain't with it, they going to set you up. They got to go. Uh, Maybe some of your family members. I mean, that's that, that's how deep it gets. Yeah, I know, I know that. That's how deep that's it gets. Why, you, you come to this yep. street, you got to prepare yourself for that. Right. Yeah, what's up, brother? I just want to say the tanks are all safe. Oh, yeah. You know how you're saying with uh, different camps, the 7th, 3rd, uh, they be trying to compete with other camps or whatever. And then, like I said, for us, because we're not, what his word says in uh, Philippians 2, verse 2, he said, uh, uh, we said, uh, fulfill ye my joy that you be like minded. Mm. Or one accord with mine, you know what I'm saying? If we don't want to call it, then everybody not going to be the same. 
Right. And then they gonna go by what he said. You, you know like, what too? You yeah. know, because we're we're not on one accord, right. we're not on one, guess what? We're not we're not messing up the most high's program. Right. You know how to go. See see the most high said he wish all could be saved. Right. But if not, the most high program keeps moving. Uh, you know, the most high program is still rolling down like a train that's rolling on the tracks. It's either you jump on this train and get with it or you get or you get rolled over you get rolled over. So because of some of us are hard headed, it don't stop the most high's program. See the most high know that some of us was going to be hard headed. It don't, it don't stop this program. It, it never did. And it never will. Never will. During the time of Noah, did it stop the most? Noah was out there preaching for all them years. And he obeyed. Did it stop the program? No, it didn't. Uh, during the Maccabees, did, did it stop the program? During the time uh, when the Romans came in. You had the uh, you had all these different revolutionary groups. Can anybody name some of the revolutionary groups that was back then? Sakari was one. Sakari was an offshoot of what was the name of the other group? They did the, the, the meaning is zealous ones. Zealous one. What was the name of? Zealots. 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 Yeah. And during the Maccabees, you had the Ossidians. Uh, that's why the so-called Jew, they carried the Hasidic. Yeah, Hasidic. See, they ain't want nothing like the Hasidians. <laughs> the Hasidic Jews. It, it was the Hasidians. You know, with the Hasidians that, that was part of, of, of the, uh, the Israelites that was battling the Greeks. And they, they were like a revolution group too. They, they, were no, they were no chumps, man. Mm -hmm. See, but the so-called Hasidic Jew takes that name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ben went over the class with y'all earlier about Haman. And the Most High told uh, uh, Israel that he's going to wipe out the name of uh, the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was Saul's job to do that, that and Saul Saul's didn't job. do it. Right. But right. guess who did it? Saul was a king, a battlefield fighter and soldier, but he couldn't take him out. So who took him out? David. A priest. Samuel took him out. A priest. So the priests don't only sacrifice the animals, they sacrifice people <laughs> when that time comes. Yeah. Because that's what Yahshua had. Yahshua? Yeah, when he was... Oh, that uh, took he, yeah, Moses' yeah. position? Right, right. Yeah. yeah, the one that took Moses' position. Yeah, man, no I mean... didn't want to act right. Yeah. The priest went in there and took care of business. That's right. The, the priests priest were the one that, that did that, that, that took the people out, man. Mm -hmm. Remember when uh, the Judite king... This was in the class too. Uh, Uzziah, you remember that, right? Mm -hmm. Uzziah. When that leprosy was in his forehead. Mm -hmm. yeah, the way the scripture yeah, yeah. reads is like the most I didn't put it nowhere else but in his forehead. Mm -hmm. Right up there. Every time he looked in the mirror, he said, man, I know I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like he, he would, the leprosy wasn't, wasn't all over his body. Right. It was just right up right in his forehead, look, man. Look like a cute tip. Yeah. <laughs> he was the king and he got puffed up. See, see, sometimes yeah. you can get puffed up, man. Get a little something, possession or what have you, which is really nothing. You can get puffed up and get beside yourself. Mm. So uh, Uzziah thought that he can go in and do the mm. priest duty. Priest duty, right? And the priest tried to tell him. Yeah, I think it was about 80, 80 yeah. priests went up in there. Priests, yeah. Yo, man, what's wrong with right, you? Right. He, he said, man, you can't do this. And all of a sudden, the leprosy came in that forehead, forehead and, and, and and they said, look in this mirror, man. He looked in it. He said the most high is real. Yeah, it was just right up in his forehead, man. It, it, didn't, it didn't tell you like, like the scripture didn't read like it read when Miriam went against Moses. She was leopard as snow. It said this guy had it right up in that forehead, man. Yeah, and he was that way until he died. But it goes to, but you know, that goes to show that Christ is the one that gives us that grace because in those days, yeah, the only sacrifice. The most high was letting it happen. Yeah, you you know you couldn't you couldn't I mean nobody else could do that but but the Mashiach, the Mashiach. Wow. and and he had to come and fulfill everything <coughs> just like we live our everyday lives he had to come live in the same society we lived in uh, be tempted by the same thing you, mm -hmm. he, he had women around him. Mm -hmm. He had women, you know, I'm pretty sure women women was probably trying to get with him. You know, he wasn't like us. Women trying to get with us. Meet me after my class. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> just like the last class I taught about Samson and Joseph. What I talk about, I taught about power 
and character, right? Right, so. Yeah. So Samson had the power. Mm -hmm. He had what men liked, but Joseph had what the character, right. what the most high liked. Mm -hmm. See, Joseph was enticed by Potiphar's, the Pharaoh's captain of the guard's wife. She she been she been trying to she was trying to get Joseph for weeks. Man. Yeah, and, and he ran and pulled his garment off, and Joseph kept going. Joseph didn't try. Hey, hey, can I have that? No, he kept moving. Mm -hmm. And she tried to claim that he tried to sleep with her. Mm -hmm. See, but Joseph's character mm -hmm. showed, and the Most High favors character more so than power. Right. But character protects that power. power See, power. if you just got one. If you don't have character with your power, your power would be in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. So Samson had power. He had what brothers want, what men like. See, men like that brother. I need a great on brother the most I want. Repair! About the fame, about the pop out of Samson. Hey, on! You know? See, men like that. But character is what the most I like. And Joseph had that. Because guess what? Joseph had character, but he wasn't enticed with Potiphar's wife. Samson had the power, no, no character, but he was enticed by who? Delilah. And, and he was enticed by that first rib he had that he put a riddle to the Philistines. And, and he did a riddle. They couldn't figure the riddle out, so the Philistines went to the, to the Phil Philistine woman said, look, you better tell us this riddle. If not, we're going to burn you and your family's house down. She said, okay, the riddle is this. What's, what's sweeter or stronger than her? Something like that, yeah. So, right, right. Right, so she, she gave up the riddle. Yeah, so Sam, Samson, you know, was falling for, you know, females. But Joseph had the character. He didn't fall for it. The most I look at the character more so than power. So I'll always be looking and always be striving for character, mm -hmm. not power, because if you have the power with no character, your power may be on its way out. You understand? You got me? Yeah, okay, right. I'm going to let you get this last and then yes, we're going to move on. I got a couple more scriptures there. Come on. You can be a leader, but if you're not a true leader... You was in that class, right? Yeah. You know, like I said, there's two types of leaders. Yeah. They're yeah. leaders and they're true leaders. Yes. Mm -hmm. True leaders, you know, he watches over But yeah. but I also said, if if we don't know what something looked like and what something's supposed to be, when we see it, we won't even know what it is. We won't even know what a true leader is if you don't know how one and what one's supposed to be. See, that's that's what messes up, up a lot of Israelite congregations or congregations, period. Because what do a, I mean, how do an Israelite leader supposed to look? How how, how they supposed to look? Supposed to look like me with a metre on, a beard, and yeah, chain. That's just, how that's how a leader supposed to look. Supposed to be Christ like. <laughs> see, 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 that's our problem. See, and and, and and part of electing leaders, sometimes the wrong ones, is our fault. Mm -hmm. See? Because we're looking at Power. power, leadership from from the eyes of what we see. Come, come. Not from how the scripture speaks about it. See, because if you look at King David, King David had power, but he had character. Yeah, of course he messed up, but he came back and he, he repented and all that because uh, the scriptures say a righteous man falls seven, seven times. Seven so, times. Uh, I mean, but you read that say a righteous man falls seven times. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he righteous, how the hell he falling all them times? Right? What what is he doing? What make him what make him right? Go back to scripture again. It says we are not right. perfect. He we repents. Yeah. When he repents, right. he's always repenting. Cause cause David, when you read in the scriptures. David messed up many times, but he always did what? Repent. Always repented. Mm -hmm. And that's why the most I said, and I love this man, the man after my own, and I like this dude, but, but some of us would read and say, man, how could, how could God, like David, <laughs> you know, and, and then go into the preaching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, but you got to understand the most side too. See? Okay, so now we talking about Antiochus Epiphanes, and the first attack 
was to settle the rivalry for the high priesthood office. There was Odonias III, he was removed from office and replaced with his brother Jason. And Jason bribed Antiochus, and then his brother Menelaus gave Antiochus a bigger bribe. And that's when the war began. Okay? Now, read war this next. The, uh, generals? Uh, the, the war between Antiochus and the war between the priests. Well, that's the priest. when the corruption began. Okay? Let's read this. Last. We're going to read one more scripture in Daniel. Then we're going to go to the Apocrypha. And we're going to come back next week. And I'm going to see what you got. Have, have you been going into the scriptures or have you been going on the site studying? Studying what I'm giving you. Okay, don't write the names down. I'm putting the names out. And then when I ask you a question on the names you don't know, okay, go home, take a day, and look up these words. Look up these names. All right? Read uh, Daniel the 10th um, chapter. Yeah, let's stop at the 10th, 10th chapter. Verse 10. Oh, you back? <laughs> Go ahead. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. It said, and the little horn who was Antiochus Epiphanes, he waxed great either, even to the host of heaven. Mm -hmm. And the host of heaven was who? Yeah. He magnified himself against the Most High himself. Mm. And, and remember, in the Apocrypha, when you read the Apocrypha, in the Maccabees, it reads that they begin to paint the likeness mm -hmm. of, you know, the, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of the angels are white babies and all that. Mm -hmm. That's where that come from when the Greeks took over. Because mm -hmm. they begin to change, you know, write, draw paintings from, from the original to what we got today. God. You know, the, the different images and so forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it speaks about and cast down some of the hosts and the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Now, what's the hosts? I want to. I want to uh, hear the physical and the spiritual. What's the spiritual hosts of the Most High? And the body. What's in the spirit world? And they and he cast that down by what? What we just said. Changing, changing, changing the images, and magnifying himself against the Most High, and blaspheme against the Most High and Yahweh Shai. Okay, and it speaks about who were the hosts. Okay, the hosts, the spiritual. Now, the physical host is who? The Israelites. Let's let's go to Exodus twelve forty one. Exodus twelve forty one. Exodus twelve forty one. See, everybody got it. And it came to pass. Everybody got it. Come on. And it came to pass at the end of the four hundred and thirty years. Even on the self same day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Now, it's all the hosts of the Most High. Now, who were the hosts? Were they angels or were they the people? Angels. They were the people. people. They were the people. Okay. So, let's look. Let's go to stars. Let's go to Genesis 37 and 9. Genesis 37 and 9. Verse 9, come on. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to This is Joseph. And told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars have obeyed. Obeyed, they, they bowed to me. Now, who were the eleven stars? His brothers. his brothers. Right. Okay, so showing you that the stars and the hosts were the Israelites that Antiochus stepped on, stamped on. Second, Second Maccabees, the third chapter. Okay, let's read it now. Come on. Second Maccabees, chapter three. Now, when the holy city was inhabited, with this is the last chapter. Now, come on. Now, when the holy city was inhabited with all peace, with all peace, and the laws were kept very well. See that now, the laws was kept very well. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because of the godliness of Onias, 
the high priest and his Be because of the godliness of who Onanias. This is Onanias the third. You know, when you research him, it, it, was, it was more than just one Onanias. This is mm -hmm. Onanias the third. Okay. It said he was a high priest because the city was at peace. The laws was kept because of his what? Read the end of that. Because of his what? You reading? Oh, because, and because of the godliness of Ananias, the high priest, and his hatred. And his hatred of wickedness. Mm. See, you got to hate wickedness, man. I mean, mm. you, you ain't going to be righteous, loving wickedness. Mm. That's right. Ananias was straight up. That's why they had to get him out the way. So all that other Greek customs and all that, all that other stuff, you know, the discus, the, the different uh, uh, Olympic games that you see today, the, uh, the discus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had that back then. That, that's in the apocalypse. When it speaks about it, speaks about the discus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that goes into worshiping the idol gods. Yes, Go ahead and read. It came to pass that even the kings themselves did honor the, the place and magnified the temple with their best gifts. Read that again. Mm -hmm. It came to pass that even the kings themselves. Even the kings. And, and it's going to get like that again when the Most High set Israel up. As a nation again. Remember in the Bible, in uh, in Zechariah, I think that's your book, in Zechariah's book, it, it, it reads about that. It tells you that the nation that don't come up in the honor of tabernacles, they ain't gonna get no rain. Yeah. So it said that the kings, even the kings themselves, did honor the temple. They honored Jerusalem. They honored the temple. And it said, and they magnified the temple with their best gifts. Now some of them was probably coming slick, but but for the most. They had respect for the temple. Come on. And and magnify the temple with their best gifts. In so much that Celeste, You can speed it up a little bit. In so much that Celeste Seleucus. Seleucus of Asia. That's that name I mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Seleucus of Asia of his own revenues. No, revenues bear all the costs belonging to the service of the sacrifices. Come on. But one Simon of the tribe of Benjamin. What tribe was he from? Benjamin. No, okay. Anybody from the tribe of Benjamin in here? No, okay. Okay. I'm going to show you what you Benjamites did now. <laughs> Come on. Read on. It, it say, in so much that Seleucus, king of Asia, of his own revenues. The king of his own revenues bear all the costs belonging to the service of the sacrifice of his revenues. Of his money. Of his own money. His own money. Now, now, so therefore, Israelites, the brothers in that circle, the Israelites that was in that circle, they knew what was coming in the temple, right? And they said, oh man, this guy put a lot of money in here. Mm -hmm. So now, let's go see what that tribe, tribe of who? Benjamin. Let's go see what Benjamin did. Was made governor of the temple, fell out with the high priest. Now read the fourth verse. Oh, oh, one Simon of the tribe of Benjamin. What tribe you from? Benjamin. Yeah, well, what the Benjamin? Y'all ain't saying your tribe. <laughs> Benjamin. We only got two that's gonna stand up. Go ahead. That's right. You see, see, y'all already know. Y'all already know Judas back was Judas off. Y'all already know that. So, so we all right with that. <laughs> so now we're gonna go into a little bit of Benjamin now. Come on. Who was made governor of the? Don't say nothing, Levi. Let's go. Fell out with the high priest about this order in the city. And when see, now he fell out with the high priest on Ananias about disorder in the city. Now, now, what that disorder? It's on the revenue. No, if, if, if Onanias was pushing what's right, it, it, so it seemed like he might want a disorder. It wasn't no disorder in no city. Unless, okay, let, you, you know, right. You know, let's, let's, let's read on and, 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 and see what there's disorder, what disorder that he hated. Okay. See, now, it's, he said, that he fell out with the high priest. We know the high priest is on the nights. And reading the first verse, Come. it said that the laws were kept and there was peace. Come. So it said that Simon the Benjamite fell out with on the because of disorder. And when it say the fifth verse, when he could not overcome on the nights. Go ahead and read. He got him to a pope. Uh, Apollonius. The son of Thras Thrasius. A Greek. 
who then was governor of Celosyria. That had power, Celosyria. And Venice. Come on. And told him that the treasury. And he told him what? That the treasury in Jerusalem was full of infinite sums of money. Now, now, now why did he go and do that? Wow. He wanted to. He didn't want to. Why did he go? See, see, they, see they, he knew that uh, uh, the kings and Seleucus was putting his own revenue for the sacrifices and they knew kings was coming from all over mm. putting monies into the temple and so forth. Mm. So now because he had a falling out, I, I, don't know, I don't know what he wanted. Maybe he wanted an Olympic game or something. Wanted some money to, for, the, for the games and I don't know, I said, no, we ain't gonna do that, man. Mm -hmm. we, we not de dealing with no Nike, the night guard, we not dealing with none of that. We not dealing with the discus pro, we not dealing with none of that. So he fell out with him, read on, in so, six verse. And told him that the treasury in Jerusalem was full of infinite sums of money. Infinite sums of money. Mm. Yeah, that's like, yeah, there ain't no end to it, brother. Mm -hmm. So that the multitude of their riches, which did not pertain to the account of the sacrifices. Oh, okay. So he had something. Was... Was so he said, and and the the monies for the sacrifice, they got a lot of money for the sacrifice too. Mm -hmm. This not just the donations from the king, so from this the, the monies for the sacrifice, man, it's, it's, it's lots of money. Yeah. Go ahead. And that it was possible to bring all into the king's hand. Mm -hmm. Now and when he said it's, and that it was possible to bring all into the king Apollonius' hand. Read on. Now when Apollonius came to the king and had shewed him of the money whereof he was told, the king chose out Doris, his treasurer, and sent him with a commandment to bring him the foresaid money. So forward Heliodorus took this journey under a color of visiting the cities of Celesyria and Venice, but indeed to fulfill the king's purpose. Okay, and I believe his king was Antiochus the Epiphanes. This was this was his general. And when he was, and when he had, and when he was come to Jerusalem, and had been courteously received of the high priest of the city, he told what he told him what intelligence was given of the money, and declared whereof he came, and asked if these things were so indeed. Okay. Then the high priest told him that there was such money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children. See, yeah, yeah, we got money, but but it's for the for the widows, man. Mm -hmm. It's for for the fatherless. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we ain't we ain't just messing the money off. Okay, we using this for something. Sacrifices for the widows. Yeah, the extra money. That's what it's going. That's what it's going into. Read on. And that some of it belonged to Hercanus, Her son of Tobias. Her Hercanus, yeah. A man of great dignity, and that is the that is that wicked Simon has missed. See, he said that Simon, Simon was who? The Benjamite. Mm -hmm. Now, he had misinformed, mm -hmm. gave his negative information. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The sum off in all was 400 talents of silver and 200 of gold. Come on. And that it was altogether impossible that such wrong should be done unto them that had committed it to the holiness of the place and to the majesty and inviolable mm -hmm. sancti san sanctity. sanctity of the temple, temple. Honored, all, honored over all the world. Honored over all the world. And it's going to get like that again in the future. Honored over all the world. But, right. but Hilidorus, Hilidorus, because of the king's commandment given him, said that in any wise it must be brought into the king's treasury. Okay, whatever they got in that temple, whatever money, so whatever they got in the temple, it must be brought into the king's treasury. Okay, that, that money is going to the king. Read on. So at that day which he appointed, he entered in, into, into, into order. Into order this matter. Which, which he, he ordered to carry this operation out. To carry this mission out. Right? Come on. This matter where for there was no small agony throughout the whole city. And everybody was breaking down because of this, man. They come to take, they come to take the treasures of the temple, man. I mean, when when, when when nations made a move against the temple, Israel started throwing dust on their head, wailing and everything. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Yeah, that temple, man, they, they looked at that temple with full respect. Come on. But the priest prostrating 
themselves before the altar in their priest vestments, called in, unto heaven upon him that made a law concerning things. When it say, but the priests what prostrating themselves before the altar in their priests, they they was they was down, man. They was on their knees and they were they was laid out. They was laid out flat. Okay, and they was in their priest vestments. They call up un, unto the Most High upon him that made the law concerning things given to be kept. Go ahead, go ahead and read. Concerning things given to he kept, that they should safely be preserved for such as he committed them to be kept. Yeah, so whenever something like that happened, man, the priest, the priest went all out, and, and that was real. Mm. It wouldn't like, you know, we, we face these and say something, then psh, we gone. But but they was there for, for real with this thing because this guy coming in, robbing the temple, and probably, would, probably was going to kill him. So they begging the Most High. They in their full vestry, down on the ground, praying to the Most High, Lord, help us, protect us. Send an angel. <laughs> Go ahead. Then whoso had looked the high priest in the face, it would have wounded his heart for his countenance. And the changing of his color declared the inward agony of his mind. See, it said even if you had looked at the priest uh, at that time when when this was going down, it, it would have it, it would have would you know would have touched you like a like a sword penetrating you. Uh, it would have hurt you and broke you up to look at the priest. You know this thing going down the way they looked, the spirit that 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 they felt, mm -hmm. the way they was feeling because of this thing is going down. And you're going to do this to the temple. You're going to do this to the Most High's treasure. It's really the Most High's treasure. Uh -huh. And the Most High going to show them who it is. Because mm -hmm. of the Benjamite. Huh? Because of the Benjamite. Because of the Benjamite. Well, we can go back up and read it now. They're still still here with Look like you want to separate from them. <laughs> you, what, you want to separate from Simon, brother? <laughs> Come on. For the man was so compassed with fear and horror of the body that it was manifest to them that wow. looked upon him. What sorrow he had now in his heart. Mm. Okay. Others ran flocking out of their houses to the general supplication because the place was like to come into contempt. Mm -hmm. Right. And the woman girded with sack, sackcloth under their breasts abound, abounded in the streets and the virgins that were kept and ran some to the gates and some to the walls and others looked out of the windows. Yeah, that's, that's Israel moving, man. They, this thing is getting ready to go down. So Israel is running everywhere. They running to the gates. They looking out their windows. I mean, it wasn't something that just kept quiet. Remember when, when you're reading about when Jerusalem in, in 70 AD, when Jerusalem was getting ready to fall, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the Romans made several attempts. Okay, when they finally took Jerusalem, okay, the revolutionary groups was out. Israel was, was in agony, man. J just imagine, uh, uh, 65, I, I believe the process, 65 or 66 AD, when they started attacking, attacking the city. And finally, 70 AD, that, that's like, what, three and a half years of just agony, of knowing that you going into captivity, man. I mean, if, if most I don't do a miracle, you going down. And... The person that was uh, Titus, the Roman general, that was his second in command, that really laid the blueprint for Titus, was an Israelite. I'm trying to, his name was Tiberius Alexander. Y'all can write that down and look it up. Or Alexander Tiberius, either way. Write his name down and, and say the Jew that helped destroy Jerusalem. It'll come up. Tiberius Alexander, or Israelite. There was this top man that laid the blueprint, but he said, look, don't destroy the temple. You think he was listening to this, brother? <laughs> Go ahead. Read on. And all holding their hands toward heaven made supplication. Then it would have pitied a man to see the falling down of the multitude of all sorts and the fear of the high priest being in such an agony. You know, that was a sad day there. Read on. They then uh, called upon the Almighty Lord <clears throat> to keep them things committed to committed of trust safe and sure for those who, that had committed them. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the Lindoris executed that which was decreed. See, he, he, this cat is a general. It's sometimes, you know, a uh, general get his orders whether he want to do it or not. Because that can be his head. Mm -hmm. So he had to execute. I mean, he's looking at the faces, but I have to carry out my mission. Just like 
some of some of these guys, hit men's and all that. It's, it's not person, it's just business. <laughs> Read on. Now as he was there, the president himself would present himself with his guard about the treasury. The Lord of the Lord of Spirits and the Prince of All Power caused the great apparition. Uh, apparition. Uh, apparition. It said the God of all spirits and the Prince of all power calls uh, an apparition. apparition. Remember, you can read in the Apocrypha about when we was when the darkness was all over Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. 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 What what uh what chapter is that in? Um, is is it in Ezra Ben? No, no it's in the Wisdom of Solomon, right? Of Solomon. Right. There was apparitions. I mean, it was dark. And the Most High had sent some some apparitions uh, upon the Egyptians nice. that nice. that they was seeing things that really wasn't was, wasn't there, and and they was hearing four footed beasts running by them. It, you know, just hearing that in the dark. Nice. I mean, you could even if you got up and took a few steps, you probably couldn't find your way back. Mm. And I don't witness being you know the darkness just darkness so thick. When I was in the military on a ship, we, you know, we was on the Mediterranean. We call them Met crews. At night, we, you know, I had certain watches. Had to walk to the back of the ship, or you had the, the left side, right side, starboard, and the port side. But when you had to walk to the back of the ship, see what they do? They give you a flashlight, but it's a red bulb in it. It's not not gonna light up everything. It's the red bulb, and you put it down and you watch your steps. And as you walk into the fantail, which is the back of the ship. You can hear the water. It's like it has spirits in it. You can hear it growling. And what I used to do is go and walk to the inside. I never, never walked in the middle. Never went. To, I walked in. I, I bumped into everything to get to the back. <laughs> you know, because I wasn't falling over, Jack. I know that's right. But my hand, I can put my hand to my face, and you can't see it because we was out in the middle of the, at night on a Met cruise. Couldn't see anything. And, and the reason for that, the, the red light bulb, because, you know, during the time of war, you show that bright light, the enemy would, would see that. So all lights, you can you can even see a ship because all ships, they paint them battlefield gray. That's a dove, a, like a, a cold dove color. So when you out at sea, you can't even, you can't even see the next ship, man. Mm. Uh, unless you on the uh, you doing a watch, and you on the skunk board. The skunk board is where you write all your contacts. You know they got the look or uh, uh, the or uh, the technology that they would find out if other ships so many miles or so what. Once they get that contact, they write it down. I got a contact such such, and 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 if you on the size of the ship standing watch, you got to look for that contact. And when they call that contact out, you may not see that contact until maybe about two to three hours. Mm. And when you see it, it's a little bitty light. You said, I got the contact, alpha, blah, 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 you're running it down at such and such degrees because you, you got your little, little thing out there, your degrees at such and such, such and such. Mm -hmm. And then when you mention it, they write that down. And I say about three hours later, you will see a big ship passing by. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that technology ain't no joke, man. Yeah, but to get back to the darkness, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face, man. Mm -hmm. and, and that water, when, when the scripture dark, speaks dark. about everything has a spirit in it, the sun, the sky, the wind, thunders, mm -hmm. that water had a spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and that water was <laughs> like it was making sounds, man. And, mm -hmm. and I pray who fall overboard, because mm -hmm. it takes a ship 10 minutes to turn around and pick you back up. See, they ain't teaching you how to swim in boot camp. They teach you how to float for ten minutes. But but if, but if you on like like a North Atlantic cruise and, and even the Met cruise in the winter time, you fall over. By the time they come around, you're gonna be dead anyway. Cause that cold that cold water is gonna they're it, it, gonna get you right up in here. Yeah. So it's best. To stay in the inside like I did, I bumped my leg, my knee. I said, "Okay, I, I can live with that." But if I fall over on this side, <laughs> I got some problems. And um, we had this dummy, a orange, a orange dummy that had, you know, like little ropes and stuff. He was made out of canvas. His name was Oscar, about six foot. 
we had, you know, it, in the daytime, we had like man overboard drills. They throw Oscar over. This is a drill, this is a drill, man overboard. Oscar, blah, 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 blah. So the ship turned around. Yeah, we got to throw the little clique in there and pull Oscar up, man. He's now six foot dummy, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you want to hear it's a drill. You don't want to hear this is not a drill. Mm -hmm. And out at sea, we had so many fires, man. There, there, there's different fire classes. Mm -hmm. e electrical fire, class Charlie, class Bravo, class. We had so many fires out there, and, and they said this is not a drill. And you got to get the fire stuff and run, and, and, and you know, everybody got to come from where they at. Mm -hmm. And then you got your gun mounts. They assigned me the gun. I still remember that gun mount 33. Mm -hmm. I actually put the bomb in the, in the mount, spin it, pew, shoots it out. Yeah, so that was some experience for me at the age of 18. Wow. So let's jump back into the scriptures and read. Mm. And I don't bore y'all with my stories. Okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Now as he was there present... What verse? 24. Come on. Now as he was there present, present himself with his guard about the treasury, the Lord of Spirits and the Prince of all power caused a great apparition. Apparition, come on. So that all that presumed to come in with him were astonished at the power of... Yahweh and fainted. And fainted. And was sore afraid. afraid. For there appeared unto them a horse with a terrible rider upon him. A horse with a what? A terrible rider upon him. And mm. adorned. Wow. And uh, uh, look, a horse with a terrible rider <laughs> on him. So, <laughs> now, now this is coming from, from the spirit realm, man. Wow. A terrible rider. Go ahead. And adorned with a very fair covering, and he ran fiercely. Fiercely, fiercely. He wasn't no little tip tap. He wasn't, he wasn't tip toeing in the tulips. Come on. And smote at Heliodorus with his four feet. And it was seen that so, so what it all the horse was was kind of rising up, kicking at it. Mm. This guy trying to rob rob the money, he's trying to rob the treasure. Mm. But this this apparition, what he was seeing, was coming towards him. Now the fierce rider probably had his sword out, but wow. the horse like leaning up, kicking at him. Mm. Get out of that treasure! Mm. Put that money back. <laughs> Go ahead. And it seemed that he had he that sat upon the horse had complete harness See? of gold. Of gold. So you know that, that that was a terrible, fierce angel mm. there. You don't want to see nothing like that. Mm -hmm. and, and I've back in the days, I, I, I've heard brothers brothers sit down and talk to us about spirits in their homes and all that. Yeah, one brother said he lived. You probably heard that story that he lived in the, this apartment with a tall ceiling, and this, this spirit came in there. This this spirit was about the size of his ceiling. The mm. spirit tried to take his newborn son. Wow. Yeah. And start talking to him. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Kazakh. Yeah. 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 You know, brothers used to sit down and tell tell us these experiences that, that they had. You know, Marshawn and all of y'all too. Yeah, we used to sit and, you know, take it in, man. So wow. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Moreover, two other young men appeared before him, notable in strength, excellent in beauty, and commonly in a pair mm -hmm. who stood by him on either side and scourged him continually and gave him many swords. So these two other angels, it's to see, see when, when the angels come to put work in, they come neat, man. They don't, they don't come with blood already on them, they stuff all wrinkled up. No, no, they come, it's like, like they already prepared. Got everything neatly laid out and the most I said, this your call. Go down there and take care of the job. Uh, they ready. <laughs> they don't come slouch like, you know, like we do. Brother, you ready to go to the camp? Oh, let me get my wrinkled up garment out the bag. No, they, 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 don't, they, they don't do that. Okay, let, let, can you wrap my meat? Let me put this. No, they, they, don't, they don't act like we act, man. When they come, when they come for battle, they ready. And the scripture said that they were beautiful to look upon. Harness of gold, armor of gold. They was clean. They get decked out when it's time to go to war. See, that's how uh, King David's army and the Israelite army, that's how they became rich. Because the other nations did the same thing. When they took them out, they went and they stripped the dead. Took the swords. Oh, that's a king. Give me that crown. Because Judas Maccabees took, um, I think he took Nicanor's crown and wore it around. Uh, uh, David took uh, Goliath's sword and all that, man. So they got rich from battles, just like the white man. He get rich from what war? 
Huh? Yeah. Huh? Come on. We gonna move on. Come on. Continue to read, brother. Yeah, we got a few more scriptures. We're gonna close. Come on. And Hill, and Hill, verse twenty-seven. And Hill the doors fell suddenly unto the ground and was compassed with great darkness. But they that were with him took him up and put him into a litter. Come on. Thus him that lately came with a great train and with all his guard into the said treasury, they carried out, being unable to help himself with his. With his he weapons. couldn't even. I mean, he was so. Startled, he couldn't even use his weaponry, man. Just imagine that there was a movie where uh, I don't know the name of the movie, but a lot of cops came after this one guy. He he had, I think it, and what's the name of this movie? He had power, but cops from everywhere came out. This guy pulled their guns out, and this guy just looked at him, stuck his hand out, and the guns began to come out of their hands and turn around on them. To be X-Men. Yeah. X-Men. X-Men. Yeah. Right, the X-Men. Yeah, so the X-Men, right, right. So with, he had his own weapon, couldn't do anything with him. So, so that's how the, huh? Magneto. What's the name of it? Magneto. Okay, yeah. Okay, y'all watching that stuff, huh? Okay. I, I watched it too. I, I liked it, that though, because when I saw it, I said, man, that's how most I don't have it, or similar, how Esau, you know they coming with their weapons, right? yeah, and they're going to hold it, and all of a sudden, they're going to try to, oh, uh -huh. weapon leaving the head, going to try to hold it, turn around and blow their own brains out. Yeah, go ahead. Continue to read. <clears throat> what verse? Call it verse. Verse 28. And manifestly they acknowledged the power of Yahweh. For he by the hand of Yahweh was cast down and lay speechless without all hope of life. Mm, come on. But they praised the Most High. They praised the Lord that had miraculously honored his own place right. for the temple. Which I, a little afore was full of fear and trouble right. when the Almighty Lord appeared. Right. With joy. Come on. Joy and gladness. Go ahead. Then straight away, then straight ways, certain of Heliodorus's friends prayed. So now the guy that was going to rob the treasurer, mm -hmm. his friends came to Ananias the priest. Mm -hmm. They always do that, man. Where, where's that good priest at? They want the good priest now. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Prayed Ananias that he would call upon the Most High to. Grant him his life. See, he went to Ananias now. Now, this is a Gentile. He went to Ananias and said, look, man, pray for me and ask your God to spare my life. Because I know he's going to kill me. I, I know I messed up. Who lay ready, Taking that order. Go ahead. Who lay ready to give up the ghost. Wow. 32. So the high priest, suspecting lest the king should misconceive that some treachery had been done to Helodorus by the Jews, Offered a sacrifice for the health of the man. So, so what they was doing, they offered a sacrifice because they didn't want the king to think that the Israelites had did something to this guy. Mm -hmm. See, but this guy's going to go back and tell them, look, man, they didn't lay a hand on me. This is what went down. <laughs> Don't sit nobody else over there to rob nothing. <laughs> this is what went down. Uh, remember that story? Uh, was it, it was the Babylonian king. It was one of the kings that he was asking his servants, uh, who shall I send to go in the Israelites' lands to take them out? One of the guys said, send the person that you hate most. <laughs> send someone that you hate, that you don't like, send them. Because them servants know that, look, man, if you go in there, you better send somebody that you don't like. You want them put to death. Because when you go in there, if they write with their God, you gonna have some problems. <laughs> the best time I think the uh, uh, Ammon the Te or the Temanite, uh, no, Teman the Ammonite had told one of the kings, "Look, if you plan on going into Israel taking this nation, if they write with they God, you gonna lose. You better go in there when they messing up." And the guy wanted to kill uh, the Ammonite for that. And the Ammonite fled to Is to Israel, and he stayed with Israel until.